entonces listo y ya listo 5 segundos así no estoy corriendo ahora sí Veintisiete. So to use the template uh, for calculation of saturated hydraulic conductivity, the first thing we want to do is copy the template because we don't want to fill up the template and then not be able to use it. So first we make a copy to use it, which means we right click on the sheet. We click on move or copy. We say we find a place to put it, maybe after these templates that are in different languages. We always check create a copy here and we say OK. Then we have to rename it and we'll probably give it a name like infiltration example. There we go. So that's good enough. Then the next step is we need to check here the diameter of the ring and the volume of water that we added on each addition of water to the ring. So 15 is actually correct. It's the same ring that we used in the field, 15 centimeter diameter. So we leave that one the same. 300 though we need to change because in the demonstration I just showed in the video, we were just using 150 milliliter every time. <clears throat> and now you can see um, something changed in the graph. We still don't have any data in the graph, but the next step is to fill that in. So we have these cells here for filling that in. So we're, what we're going to do is each successive addition, we're going to give its cumulative time. So here, so the first one we have is uh, it only took five seconds. So the first one is just zero minutes. This is the minutes column and five seconds in the seconds column. Then the next one was at 26 seconds. That's the cumulative time. So the total time since we started zero and 26 seconds was that one. Then we have one minute and 21 for cumulative time. Then we have two minutes and 46 cumulative time for the next one. And now we're just, I'll go a little bit faster. And now, one thing you'll be able to see now because of there was a slight measurement error you'll actually be able to see it in the data so you can see that here a curve has started to appear and then there's this jump so this is probably not this is probably some sort of a mistake and in fact it is because this last interval between 1553 and 167 is very short for what we've been measuring so far so really the end of this interval was actually 16 and 7 so what we need to do is we'll we'll change this upper one, sort of get rid of the 1553. We just jump to the 16.7. And you'll see that eventually once I do the next interval, which is 18.42, 18 minutes, 42 seconds, now you can see we get this smooth curve back again. Um, okay, now we finish up the last few. We have 21, 21, and the end of the... Uh, measurement in the field at 24, 25. Okay, so now this is good. This is what we want to check. It won't always be this clean of a curve, but you often get this sort of a result where you have a, a curve that is really settling into a, to a slope, and that's the slope that this other approach is trying to analyze. So now the next step is to analyze these uh, data. So this grayed out graph is just for reference. And really what we want to look at is this graph where the variables have been a bit transformed. They've been divided by the square root of time and the other things. So you don't need to necessarily worry about all that. That's part of the method which is published in the article that's cited here and on the website. 
what we do need to look at is this this curve fit here where so we have this data we have the same series of blue points and that is um, and you can see here what we want to look at are these ones that have the squares around them because this is the part of the graph where the behavior is becoming more regular and there's this green line and so we want, what we want to do with the green line is get a very good fit to these last few points along the plotted uh, data so what you can see is that if we click on this series so we click on just the squares not the blue dots we click on the squares here and you can see now they're, they're lit up. And what it'll show us, uh, just like in any Excel graph, we can see what the range of points that are being plotted is. What we want to do is make this green line line up very nicely with the end, these last few points. And one of the big first the reason why it's not fitting very well is that we have this 0 and divided by 0 in the, at the end of the, um, the series because we didn't measure as many points as, uh, as would be needed to have this last data point. So what we do is we, just, we grab the corner here of this blue rectangle, we move it up. We also need to do it here so that everything works out. So now we have a much better fit because we're just looking at all the, the boxes that have uh, the, the data that have squares or boxes. So now we can actually do even better though. So what we're looking for, this R squared number is a measure of the fit and it can go up to one. One would be a perfect fit. We don't expect that, but we can get actually quite close because this, is, this data is very linear. It lines up really well, especially on these last six points. So if we just look at those last six points, that will be, so if we drag this from above, what we can do is we'll just get, let's see, there's the last six. Now it's messed up because we need to do these purple ones as well. So now you can see here, we have a very good curve fit. We have 0.9951, very close to one. And so that's, that's good enough. It's very good for the beer can method. So we then, now we can leave that. So we have this curve fit done. And what we're interested in here now is the slope of this line. So this y equals the slope times x plus a constant. We want this 0.2221 number. And you can, you can see here, it says down below, enter the value of the slope from the fitted green line in the graph above. So this is the value b in the equation. And we're gonna, we're gonna change it because it's from some previous example and we have 0.431 here. We need to change it to 0 0.0221. Um, so we go in the cell, we click on this data, we say 0, 2, 2, 1, there we go. Um, the rest of this information is taken, this 75 is taken automatically from the diameter of the ring, just turns it into a radius. And then we have uh, to be able to use in this equation. And then this is our saturated hydraulic conductivity, which we're estimating 0 0.0111 millimeters per second of water infiltrating. And that comes out to 40 millimeters per hour of estimated saturated infiltration or conductivity. So that's, that's the result that we're looking for right there. Um, we could compare that among different soils. If one, one last thing to measure is, uh, to mention rather, is that this A star value, which is used in the equation, can also be changed for certain circumstances. So for most agricultural soils, so this includes even clay loams, uh, sandy loams, um, uh, other soils that are really in the medium uh, texture range, we can just keep this value at 0 0.012. If we have a very sandy soil with noticeably rapid infiltration, we can change this to 0 0.036, a little bit higher. And if we have uh, clay soils, so it could still be an agricultural soil with developed structure, um, aggregation, those kinds of things, then we can change it, make it lower to 0 0.004. If we have an extremely compacted clay soil, like a construction site or some other very compacted situation, then we can say 0 0.001, very, a very low value here for A star. But generally, we just leave it at this 0 0.012.